Welcome to my channel. I am Tabitha and this is The Bettencourt's Life and I figured I would come on and just share a little bit about how we got started here. This is our journey. Welcome to The Bettencourt's Homestead. This morning I was on the treadmill and I was looking at Homestead Mama's Facebook group face page. Um, it's a group the, where everybody talks about their homesteading stuff. And somebody came on and said that they had bought property um, and they arrived at the property and it was just in shambles and all of their ideas, they, they couldn't figure out how they were going to get it. It just was like a lot more work once they started looking into it. Um, trees and stuff were dying on the property. It hadn't been taken care of by the owners for a long time. <sighs> Ignore the the construction in the background and it, it, it got me thinking I haven't shared our journey with you in a very long time so I'm gonna share a little bit snippet of how we got started and um, how we are 11 years behind schedule but that's okay that's okay so um, it comes to a point where you get so behind schedule you just start dropping years like okay we'll just keep moving on but this is what we originally had planned so originally that shop back there, the metal building, that, that was the first thing that was on this land. The only thing that was on this land when we bought it was the septic tank, which we ended up having to pick up and move because it was in the wrong spot. It was where the house was supposed to go. And then we put the shop, so that was it. So we have the shop that we, we put down. The next thing that we put down was, can you see that? It's a, we put the cottage. That we lived in 698 square feet. We lived in that for 11 years. It was not easy, let me tell you. Um, it was really hard to figure out where to put our stuff, but we made do. We canned, we did all the homesteading stuff, everything in that little tiny place. Um, the only really sad thing was that we couldn't really entertain because it was hard. We couldn't have people stay over. However, we did entertain. I built a table for that place where we could seat nine people at that table. And uh, we did not hesitate. There were always people in that house. However, we lived in that for 11 years. And after 11 years, we were like, hey, um, maybe it's time to build the main house. And that was the house that you guys watched us build. I did videos, uh, weekly videos on the build of that. And there's a playlist that you can watch that. It's a Highline home, which means the people the company that we went through was Highline, and then we did most of the work ourselves. Like we did the cleaning, the picking up, everything like that. But in between the 11 years that it took for us to put that down and then have this, well, it was quite a few years, but in between all of this time, I was working. So I stopped working my main job and I started working on the land solely. And the reason we did that was because when I was in Fresno working, I was making twice as much money as I was when I moved up here. Cost of living was slightly cheaper here, but not that much cheaper. And we couldn't, we didn't have enough money to hire people to do the job, but we didn't have the time to do it ourselves. So what we ended up doing was I ended up staying home since I had all the plans and the ideas and I could do the research. And my husband ended up being the financier, he calls himself, he calls himself the financier. And in those 11 years, what we did was we built the structures and the bones of the place. So we built the wall. This is a 220 foot wall. It is not the only wall that is on this property. Everything that we designed, the garden beds we designed, we have a pump house in the back. We have a barn for storage in the back. We built a studio. Let's take you down there and show you that. We built garden beds that would last. We're having to replace those now and you'll see videos on the garden system that I'm, the new bed system that I'm doing. In fact, we'll walk right past it. We had a bobcat, a bobcat come through yesterday and uh, terrorize some cats. They had a little, the cats had a rave party at, on our property and one of them, um, the cops invaded. And yeah, so anyways, these are the new garden beds that I am putting in. They're supposed to last for 20 to 25 years. Really liking them so far. I've got them for two, two years. They're two years in now. So this is a fruit guild that I built. This is all I was doing was prepping the land, planting the plants, letting them go, and um, 
just making, hoping they stayed alive while we were building. There's another wall. I don't know if you can see that, but there's another wall that I built. And here's the cottage now. It's just a, it's just a storage place for us. But here is the studio that we built and that was another storage because we had all of our furniture that we wanted to put in our home like some antique furniture we built a dried storage unit because that metal shop that thing leaks like a sieve let's just be honest it leaks like a sieve so we built that and then one of the biggest things the best things that we did was we built a chicken coop and we built it like a penitentiary so there's the the warden's office the butt nugget factory, everything down there, broody jail. So if you ever have a broody chicken, we have a way of, of fixing that. And then I'll walk you over to juvenile hall and juvenile hall. That's juvenile hall right there. So everything that we've done is literally to, with the thought of having a forever home up there. And that got built in 2020. So how did we do it? How did we get all of this stuff done? How did we know what to plant, where to plant? Well, so in my brain, I had all the ideas of what we wanted to do. And I get the feeling that this lady that posted on the Homestead Mamas group, she has the same thing. She has all the plans of what she wants and she has a timeline of how she wants to do it. I'm just gonna tell you right now, Homestead Life does not follow a timeline. It has its own timeline and time sometimes stands still. So what I did to help me was I took a stack of index cards and I listed one project on each index card on the front and on the line side, I turned it around and I listed everything that had to be done before that project could be done. I still have projects on this land that I need to do and I'm still working on those timelines. So if you notice here, this wall just stops and it's not finished. And there's a set of stairs that stops and is not finished. Well, that's on the, that's on the list. But in order for me to get the stairs done, we wanna pay off the house. Like, look, I have stairs. Oh, we can walk up them, but then I have stairs that are not finished. And those stairs will take us right up to the top part of the house. However, in order for me to finish this, I need to finish this wall. In order for me to finish the wall, I need quite a bit of money. In order for me to get that money, I need to finish some other things first that are still, that are still needed to be done. So this wall, this project is waiting and that's on an index card. So we had a stack of index cards, like literally it was about this thick of projects that we needed to do. Some of them were really simple projects like move gravel, but then we had to buy gravel, but then we had to build the, pla the, the planters and we had to outline the planters. And because I was no longer working, I ended up trying to find ways of doing things with the least amount of money. Like what about the planters. I needed to border the planters. Well, I had a friend that was getting rid of some brick that was on her fireplace, which means it's slippery brick. So it's not good for a walkway or a planter. So if you notice, I took bricks and laid them diagonally and I created kind of like a little herringbone pattern all the way up. And that was my border. This border cost me nothing except the toe because my truck broke down in the middle of hauling them, but moving on. So we built the border and then we put the gravel down. Everything was on index cards. And I did not look at the next index card until I was finished with that first index card. I would have six projects going about at a time. One of them would be an indoor project. One of them would be a project waiting for parts. Another one would be a project I could only do with my husband because it had heavy things that I needed help hauling. Like when we built the chicken coop, I built all the walls up on the flat space, but I needed to have him help me carry the walls down. Could you just imagine being a husband coming home from work and having your wife waiting for you in the driveway? And he's going like, what do you need, honey? I need you to help me carry a wall down a cliff. And this is, I'll never forget the expression on his face. And then he's coming back, another one? Yeah, another one, okay. Yeah, but I got it done, I got it done. So you follow the index card, one thing on the index card, turn it around, put everything that needs to be done. Every single chore that needs to be done gets on another index card. List, put those index cards in order, and then all you have to do is top, touch the top one. 
and then you go all the way down until you can't do any more with that index card and then you take another one and you just keep working. You have big projects in, in play and you have smaller projects in play. Projects you guys have to do together, projects you can do on your own, and then projects that are inside projects when it's raining and projects that are winter projects, projects that are summer projects, and projects that you can do in five minutes or whatever, like weeding. Like I, I, have, I have weeds. I don't know if you've noticed it, but I have a lot of weeds. So when I have five minutes, like I'm waiting for somebody, I'm out here and I'm just starting one section and I just pick weeds. I, and I see weed right now that I picked, that I need to pick. But anyways, that's how I started this whole place. And man, for five to seven years is the average burnout for a homestead. And there was about the seven year mark that we wanted to quit. It's lonely, it's lonely. It ne the work never ends, never ends. And you pretty much have to stop eating out, really conserve your, your, your money, your finances. You have to start, you know, unless you're both working and you're hiring out to do it, you really have to pay attention to all of your finances. And it was tight some years, it was like so tight. And then all of a sudden we turned around and it was like, oh, this feels so much better. Like we can breathe a little bit. And then the blackberries took over, yeah. The blackberries said, oh, you wanted to breathe? I didn't know that was good for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, you're not breathing, you're working. Put your gloves on. That's how we got started. That's how we got to where we're at. Every single day was learning something, finding something to do, keep, keep working. And if I was, the one thing that I focused on, like the one thing that I really focused on was planting all the plants. When the plant sales started, I cleared a section of land. I'm actually working on it now and um, see if I can get a good picture of it. I'm just doing this video really quick. Tell me if you like the concept of it. You see that wall back there? Yeah. I'm building ter terracing, um, little, short, little short walls um, via the terracing method so that I can um, terrace and work in that area. This is the fruit terrace. This is the area that when we first started, when we realized we were really behind schedule and we had bought a whole bunch of plants, blueberries, uh, marion berries, grapes, and we had held them in containers for a year and a half and we're like, we really need a place to put these things. I came out here and I shoved them on this little hillside and literally it's like this. So I'm stair stepping it um, slowly. That's what all the cinder blocks up on top are for and this is where I'm working that's where I work when I don't have like when I have a couple hours or I have a day that's where I'm at when I'm not picking blackberries or pulling blackberry plants out but it's gonna be a long process but you just you have to have your main goals like what do you want your water source what do you want your food source what kind of plants do you want to grow and then when you have a sale buy those plants plant them in the ground somewhere because most plants are movable and don't worry about the huge overall picture. Start at your house and make sure your house is secure and then move out from there. And inside jobs, inside chores, when it's raining or it's too cold, that's when you work on the inside of your house. When it's nice outside, that's when you're outside working outside. Eventually it will all come together and you will be thinking, oh my gosh, I am exhausted and it will never come together. And that's between the five and seven year mark. Don't stop, keep going. Just keep remembering, it will all come together. I am exhausted half the time, I'm exhausted. Like I'm exhausted today because I literally was up all night having a buddy, the bobcat, come back and attack some unknown cat. I have no, no clue. But I'm glad the cat got attacked because, well, I'm sad he got attacked, but he gave my Mr. Mole enough warning that Mr. Mole could flee, so. And Miss Vole is sitting here saying, where's my brother, right? Where's my brother? So anyways, that's how we got started. And that's what we do every single day. I wake up, I figure out what needs to be done, and I just keep doing it. Sometimes I sit back and God really shows me, like, look at what we've done together. Because there's a lot of lessons that are learned on this. The one thing that I will tell you is in the winter, when it's really cold outside, that is when you pick one thing. It's when I pick one thing to learn and I immerse myself in that one thing. Like one year it was essential oils. The other year it was master gardening training. The other year it was becoming a permaculturist. Um, soap making is on my list. Uh, 
Um, I could just go on, but pick one thing in the winter and immerse yourself in that when you have spare time. Because really there is no spare time. We bought, we, we, we bought rocking chairs and we were gung-ho set on having some rocking chairs on the front porch. I moved them down to the studio porch because we never have time. Okay, I'm going to go in and clean up the jars from my canning session yesterday. I will talk to you guys later. Have a great day and you can do it. Index cards or a big massive list. Get your ideas out and put everything in order so you're not running around um, with 15 million jobs that need to be finished. You should have about five or six. Five or six open jobs and that will, uh, that will be much more doable. Hope this helps you guys. Bye. A bobcat come through. This is definitely bobcat prints. Yeah. Okay, but back onto the project. What were we talking about? Like these raspberries, they just got stuck there on accident because I planted them temporarily and they just keep coming back, so I just keep leaving them there. And now I've designed around them. So blackberries are good. However, that we're on the side of a fireplace, an internal fireplace, and I... That's a dog, somebody's dog crying. Probably because it was lonely in the car. I laid, I took... <laughs> Cottage. I don't know if you can see it but it's the cottage. That was the next thing that we put down. And we